The subject that we are going to study today is the underworld or the secret world under the earth. Look at Ephesians chapter 4 verses 8 and 9. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? The Bible talks about the lower parts of the earth. What are these lower parts that the Bible is talking about? Now there is a whole world within the earth. There are many places under the earth that the Bible talks about which Christians mostly are unaware of. The first place that I would like to show you from the Bible is a place which everyone is familiar with is a place called hell but most Christians are not aware that hell is located under the earth. <clears throat> now there are three words that are translated as hell or even four words that are translated as hell in the King James Bible. The Hebrew word Sheol is translated as hell and the Greek word Hades is also translated as hell in the King James Bible. Both of them are translated as hell. In the Old Testament, it's Sheol. In the New Testament, it's Hades. Both of them translated as hell in the King James Bible. The modern English versions either transliterate these words. That means they would leave these words as they are in the Old Testament. They would leave Sheol as it is and in the New Testament they would leave the word Hades as it is. They would transliterate these words into the English language. Now there is a problem with that. Most people generally are familiar with this place called hell. They understand hell as a place of great torments. They understand that it's a place where wicked people are cast into. When you are witnessing to an unsaved person, it's easy for you to tell that person that if he or she does not trust the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation, they would be cast into this terrible place of torments called hell and they would understand it. But if you tell them that if they don't trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their savior, they would be cast into a place called Sheol or Hades, it would be meaningless to them, it would make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Now the second thing that modern translations do is translate these words that is Sheol and Hades as underworld. There is such a place called underworld but to translate Sheol and Hades as underworld would also be meaningless because in the underworld there are many places. If a person is sent to the underworld, it is not necessary that he or she is sent to this place called hell. He could be in any other place under the earth. So underworld also is not the correct translation. The King James translators translating hell uh, or translating Sheol and Hades as hell have done the right thing. Now there is another Greek word that is translated as hell in the King James Bible. This word is the word Gehenna. Gehenna is also translated as hell in the King James Bible. Now the word Gehenna comes from a, a Hebrew word Hinnom. Hinnom is the name of a valley south of Jerusalem. It's called the Valley of Hinnom. And from this word Hinnom, you get the Greek word Gehenna. Hinnom, a valley south of Jerusalem, had a place in it called Tophet. In this place called Tophet, in the Old Testament times, they would sacrifice their children to the god Molech. Later on in New Testament times when the practice of sacrificing children uh, to the god Molech was discontinued, this place Tophet was turned into the city garbage. And 
in Tophet, they would burn the garbage of the city of Jerusalem and the garbage would be burning continually. And this word has been taken to be a picture of the lake of fire that would be on the earth during the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's something else that Christians are not aware of. The lake of fire would be on the earth in the millenn during the millennial reign of Christ and this Gehenna is a picture of that lake of fire. In Mark chapter 9 for example, the King James translators have translated Gehenna as hell. If they had translated it in any other way, it would not have been right doctrinally. If they had transliterated it and left it as Gehenna itself, then it would make no sense whatsoever. Anybody reading it would not understand what Gehenna is. So the King James translators, as always, are right in translating Gehenna also as hell. So all three words have been translated as hell, Sheol, Hades and Gehenna. All of them refer to this one place that exists or it is located under the earth. We have been saying that hell is located under the earth, but does the Bible say that? Let me show you a couple of verses to show you that hell indeed is located under the earth. Look at Amos chapter 9 verse 2. Though they dig into hell, then shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. You see that it says, though they dig into hell. To go to hell, if you would make an effort to go into hell, you would have to dig. And that means you have to dig the earth because that's where hell is located, under the earth. Look at also Isaiah chapter 14 verse 9. Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It had raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. Look at that, it says, hell from beneath. So the Bible speaks very clearly as hell being under the earth. Now there are many other verses which say that, but these two verses should suffice for us to understand that hell indeed is located under the earth. Now the Bible says that hell was originally created for the devil and his angels. It was not created for human beings at all. Look at Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. It is the devil and, uh, and his angels for whom this place called hell was created by God. But since man fell into sin, the Bible says that the result of man's sin is death. Not only the death of his body, not only physical death, but also the eternal punishment of his soul. So the dead of all ages, if they were unsaved, would be cast into this terrible place called hell. So in the Old Testament, the unsaved dead would go to hell, the souls of these people. Remember, it's the souls of the unsaved that go to hell. It's not the body that goes to hell. The body goes to the grave. That's where the body is and it returns to the dust. But the soul can never die and it is cast into this place called hell. So all the unsaved of the Old Testament are cast into hell. In the church age also, the unsaved are cast into hell. So also in the tribulation, the unsaved of the, trib, uh, of the tribulation are also cast into this place called hell and is the same with the millennium. All the unsaved of the millennium are cast into hell. The Bible says, of course, that at the end of the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ on the earth, all the souls burning in hell would be transferred to another place called the lake of fire, 
where they would be forever and ever. It is a horrible place of torments. So hell is a place of torments and it is located under the earth. Now there is another place under the earth that the Bible talks about and this place is called the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit. There is a Hebrew word which is translated as destruction in the Old Testament. This Hebrew word is Abaddon. Abaddon is translated as destruction. Now this word occurs six times in the Old Testament and four out of six times this word Abaddon is related or connected to hell. Look at Proverbs chapter 27 verse 20. Hell and destruction are never full, so the eyes of man are never satisfied. You see that? Hell and destruction, they go together. Hell is a place, so also is destruction a place. Another name for the bottomless pit is Abaddon or destruction. Look at Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 15. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. I want you to notice these words, the sides of the pit. This bottomless pit only has sides. The reason for that is because it doesn't have a bottom. It would be like a donut, a hollow donut. It only has sides. It doesn't have a bottom. So that's why it says this person is brought down to hell. That is to the sides of the pit. There are two things you have to notice. The connection between hell and the pit. They are both in the same place. They are both connected to each other. Bottomless pit is a part of hell or an extension of hell. This is also a place of punishment just like hell. But we will see that it's not a place of punishment for the unsaved dead of any age. But this place called the bottomless pit is also a place of punishment, a place of torments. And this place is connected to hell. The second thing is that it only has sides. It does not have a bottom. Now see what the Bible says about the location of this bottomless pit. Look at Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 and 2. And the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit. And there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now this star is an angel. And this angel falls from heaven unto the earth. Look at that. When he falls to the earth, there he is given the key to the bottomless pit. That tells you that the location of this bottomless pit is on the earth. But more accurately, it is under the earth. It is exactly where hell is. Look at uh, Luke chapter 16 verse 26. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So this place is also called the great gulf. The great gulf. And if you remember the story, the rich man has gone to hell and Lazarus has gone to paradise. And the rich man begs Abraham to allow him uh, to pass over or at least for Lazarus to come and dip his finger in water and cool his tongue. But Abraham says this cannot be done because there is a great gulf between us. There is a bottomless pit separating us. And that's why he says, no one from your side can pass over to this side and no one from this side can pass over to hell. So this tells us that hell and the bottomless pit are connected to each other. They are located in the same place. As I've said, the bottomless pit is an extension of hell. 
Now the Bible tells us that the Antichrist is connected to the bottomless pit. In the Greek, once again, there is a word that is translated as destruction and perdition. That word is Apollyon. And Apollyon is another name that is given to the Antichrist in the Bible. And we see that the Antichrist is firstly connected to the bottomless pit. Look at Revelation chapter 9 verse 11. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. Look at this. Apollyon and Abaddon are the Hebrew and Greek names of the Antichrist. Abaddon is the name of a place and that pl uh, name is given to the Antichrist. That tells you that he's connected to this place. He is called Apollyon. The word Apollyon comes from a Greek word Apollumai which means destruction. So even the name Apollyon is connected to destruction or the bottomless pit. The Antichrist is called the son of perdition and the, another name for the bottomless pit is perdition. That means he is the son of the bottomless pit or he is the son of perdition. This is the place that the Antichrist belongs to. Now look at uh, Revelation chapter 17 verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. Now look at this. He says, the beast that thou sawest was, is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. The Antichrist ascends out of the bottomless pit in the tribulation. That means, today, the Antichrist is here in the bottomless pit. Now that's a subject of another study altogether. But if you know what the Bible says about the Antichrist, you know that the spirit of Antichrist is in this place called Abaddon or Apollyon or the bottomless pit. And he will arise out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition in the tribulation. Not only is the Antichrist connected to the bottomless pit, but the devil also has a connection to the bottomless pit. Now, whatever is said about the Antichrist is also true of Satan. If the bottomless pit is the home of the Antichrist, so also would it be the home of the devil because the Antichrist is the son of Satan. So they both belong to the same place. But the Bible says that at the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ to the earth, at the end of the tribulation, he would bind Satan and cast him into the bottomless pit for a thousand years. Look at Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 to 3. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the, thou the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So not only is the Antichrist in the bottomless pit, but the devil or Satan also would be in the bottomless pit during the millennial reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. But there is something else about this bottomless pit that you need to know. The Bible says that unclean spirits are also connected to this bottomless pit. Un uh, in the King James Bible, Unclean spirits are also called devils. In the modern English versions, you would find the word demons. But the King James Bible does not use the word demons. It uses devils or unclean spirits, but never demons. The reason for that is very simple. Uh, among the Greeks, there was a belief that there were good demons and bad demons. 
Plato, for example, believed that he had a good demon in him, which inspired him to write his philosophy and teach his philosophy. So the King James translators were very careful to avoid this very confusing word demons. And instead they use unclean spirits and they use devils, which is the correct translation. Look at Luke chapter 8 verses 30 to 32 to see the connection between unclean spirits and the bottomless pit. And Jesus asked him saying, what is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them and he suffered them. Now this man who had a legion of devils in him was healed by the Lord Jesus Christ and when he cast out the legion of devils out of this man, they begged him, they begged the Lord Jesus Christ not to send them back into the deep. Now you see the word deep there? The Greek word for deep is abusos. Abusos or abyss as we call it in the English language. In the Greek it is abusos and it's another reference to the bottomless pit. And they beg him not to send them to the bottomless pit where they belong. Now who are these unclean spirits? These unclean spirits are the spirits of the giants who were killed in the flood during the days of Noah. Now once again that's a subject for another study altogether so we will not get into that but let me just say that these are disembodied spirits. They seek for bodies to possess and inhabit. That's why in the New Testament times we see people possessed with unclean spirits. These unclean spirits are not fallen angels. These are the spirits of the offspring of uh, fallen angels and women that we read about in the book of Genesis chapter 6. And these unclean spirits or devils are also connected to the bottomless pit. Now I want you to see the difference between hell and the bottomless pit. Hell is the place where the souls of the unsaved are sent to. But the unsaved souls of people are not sent to the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit seems to be a place that is specially reserved for spirit beings, especially the unclean spirits, the devils, and the antichrist, and at a later time, the devil. So the unclean spirits are also connected to the bottomless pit. The devil and uh, the antichrist are also connected to the bottomless pit. So you have hell under the earth, and there is the bottomless pit under the earth. But there is another place the Greek word Tartarus, the Greek word Tartarus is also translated as hell in the King James Bible. The word appears only once in the Greek uh, New Testament and the word Tartarus is translated as hell in the King James Bible. What is this place called Tartarus? Look at 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Now, we stick always with the King James Bible. We believe that the King James Bible is the pure preserved word of God. The King James Bible con uh, contains the preserved words of God. That means there are absolutely no mistakes in the King James Bible. It is the final authority for Christians in this church age. And it is the infallible, inerrant word of God which consists the words of God. Now that's very important for you to note. Now the King James Bible translators have chosen to translate Tartarus also as hell. And there is a reason for that. That's because Tartarus is also an extension of this place called hell. Just as the bottomless pit is also a place of torments, 
Tartarus is also a place of torments. Now in this verse that we have just read, it says that God did not spare the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell. That is, cast them down to Tartarus. Who are these angels that sinned? These angels that sinned are the angels of the days of Noah. They sinned with mankind. They cohabited with the daughters of men or with women. And therefore, they were cast into a special place in hell called Tartarus. Tartarus is located in hell itself. And that's why it's not wrong to translate Tartarus as hell. The King James translators are right as always. But you see, within Tartarus, or, or sorry, within hell, Tartarus is a separate compartment which is reserved for the special class of angels. That means this is a prison which is reserved for these angels that sinned in the days of Noah. Now, how do we know that this place called Tartarus is a prison? In the verse that we have just read, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness. You see that? They are bound in this place called Tartarus, which is in hell. They are bound with chains of darkness. That means it's a sort of a prison for the fallen angels who sinned in the days of Noah. So Tartarus is a prison. It's a place where they are bound with chains of darkness. Look at what the Bible says in Jude verse 6. Jude chapter 1 verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. So this is a separate compartment within hell. And this place, Tartarus, is specially reserved for the angels that sinned in the days of Noah, and there they are kept, bound with chains of darkness, until the time of their judgment. In Job chapter 1, verse 6, we are told, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them. Now the reason why I'm reading this verse is because some Christians think that all fallen angels are bound. All fallen angels are not bound with chains of darkness. There is a special class of angels who are bound with chains. We just read in Job 1.6 that Satan along with sons of God appeared before God. Now, in all probability, these sons of God are fallen angels because Satan also is found among them. And we see that they are free to go wherever they please. They are not bound with chains of darkness. So, <clears throat> these angels who sinned in the days of Noah are the angels who are kept in this place called Tartarus. Look at 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So the context of Second Peter chapter 2 verse 4 tells us that these angels who sinned, sinned in the days of Noah. What was their sin? You will read about it in Genesis chapter 6. They cohabited with the daughters of men. Now, many Bible teachers have been teaching you that uh, when it says that the sons of God cohabited with the daughters of men, it means that the sons of uh, Seth married the sons uh, or the daughters of Cain. Now, that's rubbish. That interpretation will not hold. Uh, but when you compare scripture with scripture, <clears throat> sons of God is a reference to angels, whether uh, the good angels or the fallen angels. So the fallen angels in Genesis 6 cohabited with the daughters of men. So what does God do with them? God casts them into this place called Tartarus. Look at also 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 19 and 20. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, 
eight souls were saved by water. Now look at this. There are some who are kept in prison. It says Jesus Christ went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Who are these spirits in prison? They were sometimes disobedient in the days of Noah. Now look at that. It doesn't say souls. It says spirits. These are the spirits uh, of angels or the Bible says that angels are spirits. So this special class of angels or spirits are the ones that sinned in the days of Noah and they are kept in a place called Tartarus which the Bible says is a prison. They are reserved unto the day of judgment. <clears throat> so under the earth there are three places that are connected to each other. There is hell which is a place of torments for the unsaved souls of all ages. There is the bottomless pit which is the home of the devil and the Antichrist as well as unclean spirits. Then there is within hell a place called Tartarus which is a prison for the angels who sinned in the days of Noah. But there is another place in the lower parts of the earth and this place is called paradise. There are many other names given to this place in the Bible, but the Greek word paradesos. The Greek word paradesos comes from a Persian word. It comes from a Persian word and it means an animal park. It's an animal park. Now paradise in the Bible was originally the Garden of Eden. Look at Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden and there he put the man whom he had formed. So God put the sinless man whom he had created in a paradise in Eden. Now this paradise, as we all know, or the Garden of Eden that the Bible talks about in the book of Genesis chapter 2, had in it the tree of life. It had in it the tree of life. Now I'm trying to show you why I'm saying that Eden is the original paradise that God had created. Look at Revelation chapter 2 verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now the Bible says that the future paradise of God will also have the tree of life in it. And Eden, when God created it, had the tree of life in it. That tells you that Eden was the original paradise that God had created and put man in this paradise. We know that when man sinned against God, God drove man out of this paradise that he had planted. So the question is, what happened to this paradise? Where is it now? What does the Bible say about it? Now many Bible teachers mistakenly teach that Eden or the first paradise that God had created would have been destroyed in the flood in the days of Noah. But you see there is absolutely no biblical proof to say that. What does the Bible say about this original paradise that God created? After man sinned against God, when God uh, drove him out of the garden, the Bible says that paradise or Eden, the garden of Eden, descended into the lower parts of the earth. That's where Eden is located today and that's the paradise that the Bible talks about. Look at Ezekiel chapter 31. We'll read verses 16 and 18. With the nations to shake at the sound of his fall, when I cast him down to hell, with them that descend into the pit. Now, this is very clear that hell and the pit, that is the bottomless pit, are both under the earth and somebody is cast down to hell. Now look at this. And all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, 
all that drink water shall be comforted in the nether parts of the earth. It says that Eden is in the nether parts of the earth and this Eden is in the vicinity of hell and the bottomless pit. Look at verse 18. To whom art thou thus like in glory and in greatness among the trees of Eden? Yet shalt thou be brought down with the trees of Eden unto the nether parts of the earth. Thou shalt lie in the midst of the uncircumcised with them that be slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, said the Lord God. Now, there cannot be a more clear verse about this. It says, the trees of Eden are under the earth or in the nether parts of the earth. So the garden of Eden that God created at the beginning when he created the earth, descended into the nether parts of the earth. It went under the earth and it's in the same vicinity as hell and the bottomless pit. Eden was not destroyed in the flood of Noah. God did not destroy the original paradise that he created. He sent it down into the nether parts of the earth. Look at Luke chapter 16 verses 22 to 23 and this will take away any doubt that you may have in your mind about this. Look at Luke chapter 16, 22 and 23. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. So this place, paradise, is also called Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom is another name for uh, this place called paradise. Look also in 1 Samuel chapter 28 and verse 13. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. Now you know the story. Saul went to this woman with a familiar spirit to bring up Samuel for him. And this woman did not realize that uh, Samuel would actually come and present himself to Saul. So when she saw, uh, you know, this vision, it's not really a vision, but when she saw this thing happening, she saw gods ascending out of the earth. These gods, of course, are angels. She thought those were gods. These gods were ascending out of the earth. What were they doing? If you read the rest, uh, the rest of the passage, they bring Samuel up with them. So Samuel is in this place called paradise and it's under the earth. That's why they are ascending out of the earth. Paradise is located very close to hell. And that's why the rich man could see Lazarus from where he was. So hell, the bottomless pit and paradise are all in the same place in the lower parts of the earth. Now the question is, what is the purpose of this paradise? Well, originally when God created Eden or God planted the Garden of Eden, he did it so that sinless man could live in this paradise. But as I've said, and as you know, when man sinned, God cast him out of that uh, paradise and sent the paradise or Eden into the lower parts of the earth. But why did he do that? Why is it there in the lower parts of the earth? It was a place of rest primarily. Look at Job chapter 13, verses 11 to 13. Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why the breasts that I should suck? For now should I have lain still and been quiet. I should have slept. Then had I been at rest. We see that the purpose of this paradise is rest. It's a quiet place. It's a place of rest. But the question is, it's a place of rest for whom? Now there's another verse that I can show you to uh, help you understand that this is a place of rest. Look at 1 Samuel 28 verse 15. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? 
when uh, Saul brought Samuel up, he says, Why have you disturbed me? I was at rest. I was at peace in Abraham's bosom. Why did you bring me up? Why did you disquiet me? So it's a place of rest. There's no doubt about it. But again, the question is, a place of rest for whom? It was a place of rest for the Old Testament saints. Now, just as hell is a place where the unsaved dead would go in the Old Testament as well as in every other age, the saved of the Old Testament would go to this place called Abraham's bosom. Now, let me be very specific. Only the saved of the Old Testament. I'm not talking about the saved of the church age or the tribulation or the millennium. I'm talking about the saved of the Old Testament. They would go to this place called paradise. Now, why is it so? That's because Jesus Christ had not yet died on the cross. He had not yet shed his blood for their sins upon the cross. They were saved by faith in God, of course, there's no doubt about that, but they were saved by keeping the law of Moses. In other dispensations, they were saved by uh, whatever commandments the Lord had given them to obey. So people were saved not by faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. They were saved by keeping the law and obeying their conscience before the law came. And all such people who were saved were sent to this place of rest to wait for the Lord Jesus Christ to finish his work of redemption upon the cross. We'll read about it in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 15. Hebrews 9 15. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of, in, uh, of eternal inheritance. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Now this is the first testament. The Old Testament. The sins of the Old Testament saints were covered by the blood of animals and by their obedience to the law. They were saved, but the blood of Christ was not yet shed and they were not yet redeemed, so they could not go to heaven. That's why they were sent to this place called paradise under the earth, waiting for the Lord Jesus to die and rise up again, waiting for the blood of Jesus Christ to redeem them. Look at also Romans chapter 3 verse 25. Whom God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. The remission of sins that are past. Whose sins is Paul talking about? He's not talking about our past sins. Because if that's what it means, then only our past sins have been covered or cleansed by the blood of Christ when he died for us on Calvary. Paul is talking about the sins of the Old Testament saints. And the, the sins of the Old Testament saints were also redeemed by the blood of Christ when he died on the cross. But till this happened, the Old Testament saints, the Old Testament saints had to wait and they could not go to heaven. Well, uh, the Bible is very clear about that. When Jesus Christ died and rose up again in Matthew chapter 27, you read about it. Many of the saints which slept rose up with him. Those are the Old Testament saints who were waiting in paradise for Christ to rise up. So they were also, uh, you know, risen with Christ and they were taken to heaven then. Every born-again Christian in this church age goes to another paradise. Now, this paradise is not, is not located under the earth. This paradise that I'm talking about, where you and I go, if you are also a born-again Christian like me, uh, is a paradise that is in heaven. 
Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Now look at this. Paul says a man was caught up to the third heaven. The Bible teaches that there are three heavens, the first, second and the third heaven. Now somebody was caught up to the third heaven and when he was caught up to the third heaven, Paul says he went to paradise. So that means paradise is in the third heaven today. Remember, we have read in Ephesians chapter 4 verses 8 and 9, when he ascended up on high, he took captivity captive. Now preachers have interpreted this verse in various ways, given many, many spiritual meanings to these words. But when uh, Paul says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. He was talking about the Old Testament saints who rose up with Christ and went to paradise in third heaven. Uh, that's very clear in the Bible. Now, what is this paradise in third heaven? Look at Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. This paradise of God has the tree of life in it. That will help you to identify this paradise. If you read in Revelation chapter 21 and in chapter 22, you will see that this tree of life is there in New Jerusalem. So the paradise that a Christian goes to is New Jerusalem. That's the paradise that a Christian goes to and that's the paradise that all the, uh, the Old Testament saints were taken up to. Today, this paradise under the earth is empty. There is nobody there because all the saints of the Old Testament who were kept there, were kept there only till the death and resurrection of Christ. And when Christ rose up, he took them all and went to the third heaven. So summarizing all that we have seen from the Bible today, there are four different places under the earth. The first place that we have seen is hell, where the souls of all, the dead of all ages are sent to. There is also this place called the bottomless pit, with which the devil, the antichrist and unclean spirits are connected. And this third place called Tartarus, a special place within hell uh, for the angels who sinned in the days of Noah in the Old Testament. Then there is this place called paradise under the earth, <clears throat> which was a resting place for the Old Testament saints till the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the question is, where would you go if you should die tonight? The Bible is very clear about this, that if a person dies without trusting the Lord Jesus Christ as his or her savior, he or she would go to this place called hell. But if you know that you are a sinner, that you have offended God with your sins and you are estranged from God, that means you cannot have a relationship with God because of your sins. And if you know and believe that Jesus Christ came down to this earth, who is Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh, he came to the earth to die for your sins. He came to take your place upon the cross. When he died, God took your sins and put them on Jesus Christ. He, was, he, he, he died on the cross in your place. He was buried and he rose up again. Now you need to believe this. You need to believe not just that Jesus died, was buried and rose up again, but you need to believe and trust that he did this for you, to save you from this horrible place called hell, so that you would become a child of God and he can take you to heaven once for all. If you believe this, you will be saved and you will go to this place 
called Paradise, where you will live with Christ forever and ever.